then a question I get asked a lot by photographers is, should I go for a prime lens or should I get a zoom lens? Should I get a 24 to 70 or should I get a 50 millimeter? Should I get a 70 to 200 or an 85 millimeter? Today, I wanna to share with you some things you need to consider when you're deciding which lens to get as there are many pros and cons for each. I also wanna thank Capture123 for sponsoring today's video. First of all, the type of photography you're using these lenses for is going to play a huge part in which one is right for you. One of the general points I like to think of is if you have control over the situation, then prime lenses might be a good fit for your workflow. And if you don't have control over the situation, then zooms might be a better choice. For example, I'm a portrait and wedding photographer and my camera bag only has prime lenses in it. One of the reasons I'm able to do this is because I have a lot of control over the situations that I'm photographing. For a portrait photo shoot, I have the ability to tell my subject where to sit or stand. With weddings, I can move around freely to get closer or further away from the action. So for me, primes are more than enough in that situation. On the other hand, when I travel with the intention of doing landscape or wildlife photography, I will instead pick zoom lenses. In this case, you don't have control over the situation, so zooms are more useful. Unlike people, I can't tell wildlife where to stand, and if you're getting closer, chances are they'll run away. It's also similar with landscape photography. Sometimes you are restricted to standing in a limited area to be able to see the viewpoint you want to capture, and thus, it might be more beneficial to use a zoom lens. The next thing you might want to consider is the size of your camera bag or what you're willing to carry with you while you're traveling. As much as I love using prime lenses, one of the downsides is you usually need at least two lenses to be able to cover a variety of shooting styles. Otherwise, just a single lens can become limiting. For example, for portrait photography, I need at minimum my 35mm and 85mm prime lenses to do a portrait session. Anything else is a bonus, but you do end up with a lot of lenses in your camera bag. Take zooms on the other hand, and if you pick the right focal range, you might only need one lens with you. This again can be hugely beneficial if you travel or spend long days of shooting. While traveling, I normally bring with me a 35, 85, and 135 millimeter prime lens. However, that was becoming inconvenient, and a lot of the time I would decide to leave the 135 at the hotel. So to make things easier for myself, I decided to get a 70 to 200 zoom lens to replace both the 85 and 135. Convenience is another big one that goes hand in hand with how much gear you're willing to carry. When you use prime lenses, since the focal length is fixed, there is more chance you'll need to change your lenses throughout a photo shoot or while you're traveling to be able to capture the compositions you need. And if you're wondering which focal lengths you should be using for certain situations, I have a whole playlist about that with heaps of examples and real world comparisons, so I'll leave that linked in the description if you want to learn more about focal lengths. With zooms, you can usually keep one lens on your camera to be able to capture a variety of situations. So instead of taking a set of four prime lenses like the 24, 35, 50, and 85 millimeter, you can instead have one lens, such as the 24 to 70 or 28 to 75, that covers the same or similar focal range. So I'm gonna use wedding photography as an example, but some photographers who use zooms will just have a 24 to 70 on one camera body and a 70 to 200 on the other camera body and will spend all day never having to change out their lenses. Compared to me, who uses only prime lenses, I'll end up switching my lenses about five to seven times throughout a wedding. Regardless of whether you use a zoom lens or a prime lens, getting your images from the camera ready for publishing is an extremely important part of the creative process. Today's sponsor is Capture 123 and you can use their editing software to do just that. Capture 123 is a great tool to save time while editing. When making photo selections, you can group similar looking photos to help speed up the culling process. There is also no delay when cycling through hundreds of images. You can also batch edit your photos with smart adjustments where you don't have to individually adjust white balance and exposure to each photo as Capture One automatically adjusts that for you. I also really love that Capture One 23 has an iPad app which you can use on its own if you're traveling or at home to complement the desktop app. 
You can use the iPad app to edit while you're on the road and then sync your work with the desktop app and resume where you left off. If you're interested in trying Capture 123, please make sure to use the link in my description to get 20% off a new annual subscription. So if you choose a zoom lens over a prime lens, are you losing out on quality? Well, that really depends on the type of lens you get because both prime and zoom lenses have sharp and not so sharp options out there. Zoom lenses have come a long way over the years and there are zooms that can be just as sharp as primes. The sharpness of primes and zooms can depend on the price of the lens. Usually more expensive lenses like the G Master series are tack sharp, whereas the more affordable versions of these lenses might lose out on some sharpness. As always, there are exceptions to this rule as I have used some ridiculously sharp budget lenses too. If this is important to you and you have your eye on a particular lens you want, make sure to watch some reviews and look at example photos to make sure you're happy with the level of sharpness. In terms of quality, another aspect to look at is bokeh. While prime lenses can come in f2.8, there are also some primes with apertures all the way down to f1.2 or even f0.95, which can be very beneficial if you love shooting with a shallow depth of field to create soft, dreamy photos. If that's your priority with your work, then I would recommend to go with a prime lens. Zoom lenses typically come with a maximum aperture of f2.8 and because of that you will see smaller bokeh in your frame and it will be harder to capture that dreamy style of photography. Again, there are exceptions. There have recently been wider aperture zoom lenses that go to f2 now, but regardless of aperture, if this dreamy style of photography is something you want to achieve sometimes, then with the right distance between your subject and the location, you can still achieve a dreamy look with zoom lenses too. Going hand in hand talking about aperture, we also have to think about low light performance. I tend to work in a lot of low light situations where I'm only making use of available light. So I like having primes to be able to step down my aperture to f1.4 in those moments and not have to bump up my ISO too high. If changing your camera setting sounds a bit daunting by the way, I do have a whole video that takes you step by step on how you can do that. You can click it up here or I'll leave it in the description if you wanna watch it later. On the other hand, zoom lenses, because they have a larger maximum aperture, it might be difficult to work with them in low light as you might end up with noisy images from having to use a high ISO. Camera bodies have come a long way, so if you have a camera with good low light performance, maybe a zoom lens is enough for you. One last thing to take into account is personal preference. For example, I really love using prime lenses for photography as the limitations in not being able to zoom and change my focal length actually pushes me to be more creative. I really like the feeling of having a fixed lens because I look at my locations and potential spots to shoot with, with that particular focal length in mind. Alternatively, I also enjoy using zoom lenses for the convenience of only having to carry one lens with me around all day while still being able to capture a variety of compositions. I also like the practicality of zooms in situations where I have less control over the scene. Let me know in the comments if you prefer zoom lenses or prime lenses and if this video helped you out if you were stuck deciding on which one to go with. But as always, thank you so so much for watching. I make new videos every single week so I will see you all next time. Bye!